Welcome to Nineworks TV. I'm here at Heritage Parts Centre today, home to 25,000 Porsche and VW parts. Today's video though is dedicated to the Porsche 997 and we're going to be looking at the top seven upgrades for the sixth generation of 911. Let's take a closer look. Okay, now before we get into the nitty gritty of these parts, it's worth pointing out that everything you see here, in fact, everything you don't see on screen as well, everything that's available from Heritage Parts Centre, you can get 10% off. Just enter the code 9WORKS10 at the checkout for any parts via Heritage Parts Centre, and you'll get 10% off. How cool is that? Let's take a look, first of all, at the biggest item on the table here at Heritage Parts Centre, which is, of course, a silencer for the 997. Now, this particular one, it might look OE at first glance, but this is actually an item from Dansk. Now addressing exhaust and silencers is quite a popular upgrade for 997 owners and the reason is twofold. The first one is you've got to consider the 997 is getting on for 20 years old now. It's a long time for those metals underneath the car, that steel to be heating up, getting cold, heating up, getting cold and exposed to the elements. They get hammered, they perish after time. And the other thing is you might just want to improve the soundtrack of your 911. No matter your reasons, there are plenty of aftermarket choices available to you, covering cost, quality, tone, of course. Dansk seem to have a lot of bases covered in that regard. They're all stainless steel, but some like this have that OE look. To me, it doesn't really matter what the exhaust looks like. It's gonna get bolted to the underneath of your car and you're not really gonna see it again until service time, hopefully. This particular silencer is the sport version. If you just want that out and out raucous flat six sound, this very well be the one for you. That's the first product of our top seven for the 997. Let's shift this out of the way. Right then, what have we got next? Let's go with chassis componentry, okay? Now I've got two parts here. I've got a track control arm for the rear and I've got a lower wishbone as well. Now, again, there's overlap here between 997 and 996. The wishbones is quite interesting in particular because it's sort of an Achilles heel, if you like, of the 996 and 997 generation 911s. And the reason is there are three bushes on here. One, two, or all three of them can perish and fail over time. The reality is they're a pig to remove. It's far more efficient in terms of time and therefore monetarily for you, the customer, to just whoop the whole arm off and replace the whole thing rather than trying to crowbar out, and by that I mean burn out, a bush. So the common thing to do is replace the whole arm. Now the reason I've got this control arm is the 997, like the 996 again, is multi-link at the rear. You've got five arms at the back all doing different bits and pieces. Costs from Porsche vary, but they tend to be eye-watering from my own experience. And that's why with my 996, I went for these Mylar arms. It's a really good cost-effective option if you're just looking to replace like for like, lower arms and control arms and all the rest of it. But the great thing about these Mylar parts, and they're all available via the Heritage Parts Centre website or the Nineworks shop, of course, is they've got a two year unlimited mile guarantee. Seriously impressive. So it's maintenance, yes, but it's also an upgrade, I would say, because you're replacing what are gonna be knackered 20 year old bushes with brand new items. It will work wonders for your handling. The other thing I'd say is, once you've got these arms all put on, you might want to get your geo checked because things might have been knocked and you might have been driving with the car a little bit out of whack. Top tip from me. Let's stay with chassis and look at something perhaps a little bit more fun. Now I've said before on my videos on Nineworx TV, if you're gonna do one modification to your car, in my opinion, it's whack on a decent set of coilovers. I've got here an aftermarket set by KW. I've got KWs on my 996. I rate them highly for several reasons. They're three-way adjustable, and these on the 996 and 997 are the inox line stainless steel, which means they will not rust. I've fitted other aftermarket coilovers to my 911s in the past, and despite them claiming to be stainless steel, they do still rust. Our climate here is particularly harsh. The KWs, though, stand up to it very well, and again, there's lots of precision built into these. It's a quality product, and it's got lots of adjustability too, which, basically broadens the breadth of use of your 911, whether it's road trips, track days, or just a shop run. Back to task. Now, coilovers, yes, is a fairly expensive outlay at face value, but it will be utterly transformational when it comes to the handling of your car. The reason for that is you're gonna be ripping out 20-year-old parts that are gonna be perished, but also you're ripping out 20-year-old technology and replacing it with cutting-edge technology from the very best out there today. 
as I say, highly transformational on your car. You will not believe the difference. A set of coilovers is highly recommended from me. It's good practice when you're putting the coilovers on to replace the top mounts as well. If your budget can't stretch to coilovers, there is a pretty reasonable alternative, and that's just a good old set of lowering springs, such as here from IBAC. People tend to fit lowering springs on 911s for two reasons. The first one is they might want to improve the handling, again, which we spoke about with the coilovers earlier on, but also it comes down to improving the stance on the car as well. Now, whether you drive a Carrera or Carrera S, or of course a 4 and a 4S, the car out the factory can sit a little bit too high. So if you just want to pull that 997 out of the sky, maybe then with a set of spacers as well, just to complement the look, this is a pretty good route to go down. Far more cost effective than the coilovers, but of course with the coilovers, you'll get not just new springs, but new dampers as well. Something to consider. Either way, assessing the chassis on your 997 is highly recommended. And as I say, there are plenty of routes to go down depending on budget. What next? Right bushings. Now I spoke earlier on about the lower arms and how it actually sometimes it's easier to just replace the whole arm. Well there are many different bushes underneath your water-cooled 911 or any Porsche for that matter. Sometimes you might just need to replace the bushes. Now the Powerflex bushes, they're renowned aren't they among enthusiasts, they're kind of the go-to aftermarket solution. What are the advantages to upgrading to aftermarket bushings such as these Powerflex items? Well these basically improve the road holding capabilities and the general performance of the car by reducing the flex of the suspension. There is a caveat to that, okay? And it does mean the ride will be stiffened up considerably. Now, if you're using your 911 daily, you might wanna have a think about if that's the kind of road you wanna go down. But if you're going for all out performance, these are a great idea. What I really like about Powerflex stuff as well is if you want to maintain the OE look underneath your car, Powerflex don't just do their kind of signature purple bushes, they also do OEM look, so black ones as well with their mouldings. These ones in particular, by the way, which are for the lower control arm, these actually allow for camber adjustability. So again, something to consider when you're evolving your 997 project. Only a couple of items left in our top 997 mods. Now this, of course, we all know what this is, don't we? A panel filter, good old panel filter supplied by K&N. These early post-millennium sports cars, to my mind, represent a real sweet spot for the enthusiast. Brilliant sports cars that are not completely overawed by technology. So I just want to enhance that mechanical feel and nature of the car. And the induction noise plays a key part of it. This is a really good way of just unlocking a little bit more of that noise. You can get conical filters as well, by the way. I personally think it's better to just stay with using the K&M panel filter um, and using it within your factory air box. There is a suggestion that the conical filter, all that's gonna be doing is drawing in hot air from your engine bay. You don't want that. So a panel filter, it's a nice, easy, quick thing to do. And also there's a little bit of a cost saving in the long term because this is a lifetime guarantee product. You never replace it. You just take it out and clean it rather than whacking a new one in each and every time you have a service. So technically there's an environmentally friendly element to this as well. Two bits left, one under the car, one in it. So the penultimate part for our top 997 modifications is this, a low temp thermostat. And again, there's a real crossover here between 996 and 997. I have a low temp thermostat fitted to my 996, for example, and it looks very similar to this by BorgWarner, which again is available on the Heritage Parts Centre website and the nineworks.co.uk shop. Lowering the operating temperature of your water-cooled flat six has a couple of positives attached to it. Number one is the cooler your engine is running, obviously the more efficient it is. The other thing is the M97 engine in the 997, which is of course a cousin of the M96 engine found in the 996, has been known to have a couple of teething problems, shall we say, with running a little bit too hot and their potential links to bore scoring. This is a really good and cost-effective way of just ruling that out from the start. So if you're doing a couple of other bits and pieces underneath the car, this is a highly worthwhile upgrade. The gasket does come with this as well, incidentally. The last product of our top 997 products to review is inside the car. Now, as we all know, the 997 represents a huge increase in quality over the 996. Haptics was a word that wasn't really bandied around the industry back in 2004 when the 997 was first revealed, but the haptics in the 997 are a quantum leap over the 996. However, again, these cars are approaching 20 years old. 
things get a little bit grubby inside, even with the best wheel in the world. And one of the first things to suffer in the 997's interior, and this is the same, by the way, for the 987 Boxster, is a couple of the finger-operated dials and toggles and whatnot on the dashboard. They get quite worn and it just makes things look really grubby inside. A quick, easy solution is to just swap those old toggles out for new items, which the likes of Heritage Parts tend to do. I've got here the temperature operator and obviously the fan operator as well. It gives it a gentle lift and stops it looking so tired. And that is about it for my top seven upgrades when it comes to the Porsche 997. Have I missed anything out? Is there anything that you can add? Feel free to add those to the comments below. It's gonna to be to the benefit of everybody. Don't forget to check out the Heritage Parts Center website as well as the nineworks.co.uk shop. And obviously don't forget to add Nineworks 10 at the checkout for 10% off at the Heritage Parts Centre.